Hey everyone and welcome back to VFX Vibe once again. Today I am going to start a brand new series which will be deep compositing inside Nuke. Yes, you heard it right. If you ever struggled in creating holdouts, dealing with complicated occlusions, struggling in edge blending specifically in motion blur kind of stuff, then this series is for you. Today will be the first video where we are going to see a very, very, very basic structure of deep compositing and specifically we are going to see what exactly is deep data. So without wasting any time, Let's get started. Okay, as you can see over here, I am having my scene set up, but let's understand what exactly is deep compositing is or before that, what exactly deep data is. So normally uh, there is a lots of difference between deep information and normal EXR with G depth information, right? If I have to segregate between normal EXR render with G depth and a deep EXR render. So this will be the bifurcation, which I am understanding in normal EXR. We are having one value per pixel which is your RGB plus A information. But if we can see our deep information having per pixel RGB A plus deep information, deep means depth information. So in deep EXR, we are having per pixel depth information. That means deep information is way better or way accurate than what we are having in traditional G depth information, right? So yes, this is the main difference between a G depth and a deep data. Also, I would like to mention that your single pixel of deep can hold multiple depth information based upon what kind of overlapping that particular element or that particular pixels having. So this is again a big advantage of deep information, right? Let's understand deep data in a very different way. So uh, I am having one scene which I am having a normal sphere and same sphere i have rendered that thing in my normal exr just to let you know our scanline render supports deep rendering right what is difference between this and this this is looking exactly like same so if i am going to show you the point cloud representation of this thing so i have to take a node called position to point which everybody is familiar with and let me put one over here. So in position to point, what I have to do, I have to select surface point should be my point position and surface normal should be normal. So as you can see over here, I am having my point cloud representation till where my camera is seeing this surface. That means whatever visible in the camera, your point cloud or information of depth from camera will be till that pixels only, right? So I am not having any kind of information behind this surface behind this surface, right? So I'm not having that information. But if I have to show you what exactly your deep is. So let me take a note called a deep to point need not to worry. I will explain each and every node in detail as we'll progress in this series, because this is the first video. So I will keep it very simple and I'll make you understand what exactly deep is. Right. So I'll take another node called deep two points and I'll directly connect my deep to my scanline render because scanline render supports deep information. Right. And also it needs a camera. So I'll connect my camera to my camera. Right. This is a simple thing. And if I'm going to show my deep two point, I'm having all information which is in front of camera, but also, I am having information what exactly behind the camera is. Can you see this? So I'm having all the information of each and every pixels, whatever we are having, uh, either it is in front of camera or in backside of camera, right? Isn't it great? So now I'm having all the information. If I want to place anything over here, I know the exact position where to place them. 
so this is the major difference between deep and uh, normal position to point if you, if you can see this is pretty simple this is my deep and this is my position to point right so this is the main difference between position to point and deep to point right so i hope little bit clear what we are having inside deep and what we are having inside normal exr renders right so let's import my uh, deep information right so what i will do i will just go and i will delete everything so i i will start from scratch in nuke we have two different kind of a uh, system called deep compositing and normal compositing which is in general a very popular compositing workflow so we have a separate group in nuke which having all the deep nodes can you see that so one by one we are going to uh, see that thing so if you want to import any deep information and by the way in maya there is a different way to render deep data if needed if you'll comment i will show you how to do that so to import any deep information if you can see over here i am having all my renders over here so if i am going to import my deep information like drag and drop it will be imported as a deep image so as you can see i am having a different color and different shape so this kind of node comes under deep category right so nuke is very smart it will automatically understand what kind of information we are going to import it so this is again another way another way is like you can type deep read node and you can go over here and you can import what you want so deep cam version 001 deep without cam version 001 so these two files i want to import just you have to hit import and what you will have you will have exactly the same thing so this is without main camera and this is again deep data this is only cam so if i want to compose this thing over there so of course i'll have a merge node and this will be my b and this will be my a like this but suddenly you can see i am having my main camera on top of my background so i need my this element to be behind this camera right so to do that of course it's pretty easy for us to do what i will do i will go over here and then type a node called crypto mat so in crypto mat obvious i'll pick what i want so i will be needing this thing might be i will needing this thing so i'll again take a node called merge and i'll connect over here and i will do stencil so what will happen once i'm going to do stencil it will cut out my this element and if i'm going to see through this now i am having a exact positioning so this is pretty simple then what is extra in in deep right so to merge deep information i will be needing another node called deep merge same way like we have in merge a and b information but over here we don't need to take care about which will be background and which will be foreground because as i mentioned earlier in deep information each and every pixels having multiple depth information just to show you before combining this thing i'm going to take a note called deep sample so what deep sample will do it will show what kind of information that particular pixels containing so i'll i'll go over here and i'll connect this thing and if i'm going to show you over here this is my position and if i'm going to play can you see how my pixels are containing multiple depth informations or deep information so i can go over here like this pixel this particular pixel having multiple information depth information and if i will show you over here again this information having different multiple depth information or deep information what kind of pixel is in front what kind of pixel is in back right uh, but in over here in traditional compositing one pixel will contain only one information right so this is the main thing which i would like to mention and if i have to combine i'll connect b and a and if i'm going to show you you will have exact similar information or similar output now first thing first it doesn't matter what is coming in a and what is coming in b if i'm going to swap this thing 
Can you see? I am not having any kind of change. It doesn't matter what's coming in B and what's coming in A because each and everything is based upon what kind of depth we are getting, right? So now, if I am having this information and this information, which is looking pretty similar, so why to use D? So if I'm going to show you this merge, if you can see, I'm having a pretty white or hollow edge, but if I'm going to show deep, you will have each and every pixels blend in a very subtle manner. And you cannot have this cut out kind of uh, look and feel. If you are using matte, you will always have this kind of pixel blending. But if you are using deep, you don't have to worry about what kind of edge you are getting because it will be always blend on the basis of depth which you are having. So this is the biggest information which I have to tell you. If you want to add anything else, like uh, if I'll go over here, let me copy this setup. And suppose that I'm having this sphere and I want to merge over here as well, right? Right. So how to do that? So same way, if I'm going to connect this directly, it will automatically will be added. But what will happen? Just let me show it to you. If I'm going to use my deep two points, you will see my sphere is somewhere here, but my all the setup is far behind my that particular sphere. So the best part of deep information is if I'll go over here, suppose that I want to add that sphere over here and I'll go to my deep samples. And I, if I'm going to sample this, uh, automatically I'm seeing like 220 or 229 kind of information I'm having. So what I will do, I will take a node called deep transform and I'll connect this and in deep transform in in G depth what I will do let me show it to you it will calculate again and I'll go to deep transform and in depth might be I'll type 225 so if I'm going to type 225 suddenly you will see your sphere will be somewhere near that thing so might be I can use X transform again it will recalculate so every time you are changing anything it will calculate the depth so I'll go to my 2d view and if I'm going to see through here and I can easily manipulate my things and I don't need to worry about what kind of cutout we are having might be I can scale it down I'll go over here and scale it down to six might be I can pull it little down. And if I want to take it forward, like 220, 190. So if you can see now my sphere is in front of my camera, but if I want to send it backwards, what I'll do just I'll type might be 225. So if you can see, I'm having my sphere behind that particular object. So this is the best part of deep compositing you don't need to take care about any kind of mask any kind of uh, edge blending just you need to rely on what kind of depth each and every pixel are having and automatically your edge blending and holdouts cutouts will be taken care right so i think uh, that's it for today's video this is a pretty basic understanding of deep data or deep compositing definitely in this series i am going to make more videos and it will be from very scratch to advanced one if you are liking this video i will definitely recommend to comment down below and if you think that this series is going to help you please don't forget to like this video share this video and if you're new to this channel please don't forget to subscribe with this said this is vfx vibe signing off have a good day